Alrighties, everyone. So today we're going to be learning how to use GarageBand, which goes with the theme of creating music online. So GarageBand is an application available for four Apple devices. It is fully it is a fully equipped music creation studio right inside your Mac, iPhone, or iPad. It has a complete sound library that includes instruments, presets for guitar and voice, and a selection of session drummers and percussionists. With, with touch bug features for MacBook Pro and initiated and a good modern design, it is easy to learn, play, record, create, and share your hits worldwide. So some of the benefits of GarageBand, if you buy an Apple computer, you own GarageBand, a fully functional audio creating and editing program. You don't have to go out and spend tons of money on software or sound words. It's simple, and it has a good interface. Uh, you can compose music. Uh, you can compose music through videos, messages, voiceovers, and more. And you don't need to worry about copyright use. The large amount of royalty-free loops and samples to create original songs that you can upload to YouTube and other platforms. So, getting GarageBand on all three devices. GarageBand is pre-installed pre on most Macs, iPhones, and iPads. If GarageBand is not already on your Apple device, just head to the App Store and download it for free. When you fire it up for the first time, it might ask you to download additional sound files. It's a good idea to grab these as, they give, as they'll give you more options for creating your own music. You also notice that many, oh, you also notice that many of the instruments won't be downloaded initially. If you see an instrument or loop that has the grayed out title, just click the arrow icon besides it to download the necessary files. So when you start up GarageBand, you'll be asked to create a new project. To get to this point, you can, uh, you can select File and then New or do Control N or Command N for Max. In this tutorial, we'll be using an the empty project option, you can check out the other options as well, as they're great for learning how to work with GarageBand's tools. After clicking choose, you'll get to the main GarageBand window. You'll also be asked to add a new track. So now just click software instrument and create. So this is the main GarageBand window. So on the left here, you'll see the library, which lets you choose different instruments. So this is uh, the left that they're talking about. So it lets you choose like different types of guitars and then it has a lot of options for electric guitar and bass. So in the main panel is the workspace where you'll see the notes you've recorded and the different instrument tracks in your project. So this is the main panel right here that they're referring to. So you can see all of the notes that you recorded. And then in this middle panel here is, this is the editor where you can make tweaks to your tracks like adjusting the volume. So this this is the middle, middle panel that they're referring to here. So you can see, you can change like the volume and like how, uh, if you want it to be playing or not. So tempo, if you, if you like, you can start off by changing the tempo. The default tempo is 120 beats per minute, but you can change this by, dub, by double clicking the tempo value, tempo value and entering a new one. You can also click and drag the number to increase or decrease it. You can also click the time signature and key to bring up menus that allow you to change them. To the right of these are buttons that enable the one bug, counting, and the metronome. So right here, you can see that you can, if you click tempo, you can change the change the tempo of your song. So the default is 120, but in this case, they want to change it to 135. So making music with Apple loops. When you just getting started, use Apple's large library of loops. Using Apple's large library of loops is a great way to get the hang of GarageBand. Loops are short stretches of music that you can use as a base for your own composition. After you opened up your new project, press the O key or go on View, Show Apple Loops. You'll see a new panel on the right side of the screen. So once you open up the loops tab, you see this panel and it has a selection of all the loops that you can use. 
so once you choose the loop, click the loop you want and drag it into the loop space. Click on the right side of the loop and drag it to make to to the right to make it longer. Click to the go to the beginning button directly to the left of the play button to get to the beginning of the track. Then click play. You'll hear you select the loop playing. Now let's add another loop. Click and drag a new loop onto the loop space. Now we'll have two overlapping loops that will play at the same time. So you can see here, they dragged a loop, they selected a loop they wanted, and they put it in the main panel. Make it, so there's a lot more you can do with loops. Try double clicking on the drum loop to open up the control panel, and you'll see that there are a lot of tweaks you can make to the loop. Spend some time playing around with the loops and you'll find that you can actually make some very cool songs. You can download new loops too and combine them with the default app loops to, to get really creative. If you're looking to download loops for GarageBand, look out, look out Mac loops, Loop Masters, and Prime loops. There are plenty of places where you, could where you can download free samples and loops. If you don't want to work with a loop that's already been created, GarageBand software instruments lets you record a variety of instruments without actually needing to play them yourself. It's easiest to play a software instrument if you have a MIDI keyboard. All you need to do is plug it in and start playing, and you'll be able to hear the snells played on any of the GarageBand's many different instruments. If you don't have a MIDI keyboard, you can actually use the keyboard on your Mac or on your iPhone or iPad. So let's try creating a simple drum track using the keyboard. So you would open up a new project and select software instrument. And so in this case, in this example, they clicked on classic electrical piano and change it to a drum kit by selecting one in the library on the left. So they selected drum kit and they chose the heavy drum kit in this case. If you press the command plus K keys to open the musical typing keyboard, they're pressing some keys to learn where the various drums and symbols are. After pressing a few keys, it looks like J and K are kick drums and the semicolon key is a snare. So let's use those to build a beat. Hit the record button, wait for the four count, count in, and start hitting the keys to play the drums. After you've played a few bars, stop the recording. You'll see that your instrument has been recorded and it saves in the workspace. If some notes weren't perfect, you can also fix them after. When you open up GarageBand, so recording software, recording a software instrument on iPhone. When you open up the GarageBand app on your iPhone or iPad, you'll be prompted to create a new song and then you'll be given a range of instrument choices. You can even plug a guitar or ba bass right into your phone or iPad. Recording an instrument is similar to the desktop version of GarageBand. Just press record and start playing. When you've recorded your instrument, save it by tapping the arrow in the top left corner by selecting My Songs. Upload your song to iCloud by tapping Select, selecting your song and tapping the cloud icon. From there, just tap Upload Song to iCloud. You can then import the track in the desktop version of GarageBand by going to File, iCloud, Input GarageBand for iOS songs. If you want to record a real instrument instead of a software based one, you can do that too. Guitar and bass can be recorded directly by plugging them into your computer, and any other instrument can be recorded through a microphone. Plug your instrument or mic into your computer or your iPhone slash iPad and a new audio track with the plus button. If you have a guitar or bass, use the option tailored to those instruments. Using the option tailored to those instruments will give you more options, so it's recommended. Once you've chosen the option, you will need to select the input channel that you're using. There are a lot of options for effects, tuning, and otherwise, making sure you, your instruments sound exactly how you want it to. As with anything else in GarageBand, it's a great idea to just start messing around and pushing buttons. You'll definitely find new things you can do with your instruments and different sound options that will help you refine your song. So using a score editor to perfect your recording. So if you double click a track or simply hit the E key, 
you can open the editor. It'll open to the piano little view by default, but clicking school will show you the musical notation of the beat you just played. If you have perfect timing, all the buzz will look the same. If you have less than perfect timing, you can fix that. GarageBand School Editor makes it easy to tweak what you just played. Just click notes and drag them to a new location to reposition them. You can also drag them up and down to change the pitch. So on the right here, you can see that they're changing some of the notes by dragging them here. So once you've crafted your masterpiece, you're going to want to save it and share it. So if you use file, then save or save as, you'll save your GarageBand project so you can come back and work on it later. If you want to save the song as a sound file so you can share it, you'll need to use share, then select export song to disk. This popper gives you a variety of options for file types and sound quality. To share your song immediately, use share, then select song to iTunes or song to SoundCloud. If you've created a ringtone, you can send it to iTunes from the share menu as well. So for more, for more tips to use GarageBand, you can check out Apple's complete GarageBand user guide. And so we also, uh, there's also alternative music creation programs such as Waveform Free, Amplitude Custom Shop, Synthesis Beer, and Cakewalk. Now it's time for the live demo. Thank you, Amitesh. So I will be doing a brief live demo of the GarageBand app from a MacBook. Okay, so first off, you're going to want to find the GarageBand app. And as mentioned, it is pre-installed on many Apple devices. Uh, it did come already installed on my device. And so if you want to find it, you can go to Finder, which is this blue button here, um, which is kind of like the file explorer for Mac. And if you then click on applications, over on the left bar here, you should be able to see every single application that is downloaded on your laptop. And so if I scroll down, I can see GarageBand right here. If you do have GarageBand already installed and you don't actually want to use it or you want to free up space, you can delete it and then it will free up that space on your device. And if you change your mind later, you can always reinstall it for free from the App Store again. If you do not already have it and you want to install it, then you can go to the App Store, which is this icon here. If you don't have the App Store on your bottom dock here, again, you can find it within Finder right here, or you can open up the launch pad using the F4 key and then locate it within your other apps. So once I open the App Store, all I have to do is type in GarageBand in the search bar here. And as you can see, it is the first result that appears. Uh, the logo just looks like it's black with a little guitar in the center. And if it's not already installed, this button will say Git rather than Open. Uh, but since I do already have it, it says open. So I'm just going to press that to launch the application. And what will happen is if you've already used it before, it will open up to your most recent project. And you can continue working on that if you wish. But if you'd like to start something new, I'm going to show you how to create a brand new project from scratch. So we went over a lot of different things and there is a lot that you can do with GarageBand, especially if you're a musician who wants to record your own and edit your own music. But that being said, you don't have to be a professional musician or really know anything about music in order to use GarageBand. There are a lot of really simple things that you can do um, to make some cool little sounds uh, and just use for fun. So let's get started with a new project. You click on file here and then new. And then from here, you can open a new empty project. 
If you click on recent, you can see your other projects you've been working on. There's also an option that teaches you some beginner lessons if you want to learn to play. So we have an intro to guitar lesson here and an intro to piano lesson that are available for free. So this can also be a great place to start if you do want to get more into a musical instrument. And if you take these lessons and you find you want to do even more, you can go to the lesson store where you can actually um, buy more lessons and more advanced lessons. So there's that option as well. And then here we have some different project templates uh, such as keyboard, amp, voice, hip hop, electronic, and songwriter. But to begin, let's just start off with an empty project. So we'll click on that and press choose. From here, it'll ask you to choose a track type. So we went over these in the presentation. You can choose a software instrument, uh, which will allow you to plug in a USB MIDI keyboard. Um, these are you know, special keyboards that you would have to buy. Um, but if you are, again, if you're a musician or if you enjoy playing piano for fun on the side, this might be very useful for you to have. Otherwise, we have an audio tra track type where you can use the microphone in your computer or an external microphone to record yourself singing or maybe chanting or rapping. <laughs> and then we also have the option to connect a guitar or bass to your Mac. And then there is the drummer track, which adds a drummer that automatically plays along with your song. So I'm just going to start out with this audio track. And I will say too, it doesn't necessarily matter which one you choose if all you're going to do is add loops. So I'm just going to start with this audio track and then press create. And here we are with this uh, brand new project. Now, what I'm going to do right now is just show how to add loops. So we're going to add like sounds and music to create our own little song. So in order to show the loop library, you can either, as mentioned, click the O key, you can click on view and then show loops, show loop browser, or you can click on this little, little button over here in the top right. And then it will open up this view box with all of these many, many different loops for you to choose from. If you wanna sort them by instrument, you can click this instrument button here. And as you can see, you can find sounds from piano, guitar, strings, kits, synths, and many more. So let's start off with a synth. Any of the tracks that are grayed out just means that you're going to have to download it. Uh, they are, they should be free to download, but it will take up more space on your computer. So uh, just keep that in mind if you do have limited space. If you wanna listen to how a loop sounds, you can just click on it. And it will start playing. And then you can click it again to uh, make it stop. So you can listen to as many as you want, find one that you like. I'm going to start off with this one. Now let's say I like the sound of that. So I'm just going to click and drag with my trackpad and I'm going to put it right at the beginning of my song. Now to hear what I have so far, I can either press the space bar because the space bar doubles as a pause and play key or I can press the play button, which is just right here. So let's listen to what we have so far. So it gives you this to start. If you want to make it longer, all you have to do is click um, to the side. So when we put our mouse over this, we see it turns into this little bar. So I can click it and drag it as far as I want to make it longer. So now we have one sound, we can add more. Um, let's say we wanna add some piano to this. 
So I'm going to click the X to go back to all the different instruments. You can also click on genre um, and choose one of these different genres to then pull loops from. But let's say I want to add some piano to this. So let's find one that might sound good. Okay, I kind of like the sound of this one. And also, um, I'll just mention that all of these uh, sounds at the moment are in the same key. So you don't have to worry about them necessarily um, like being in different keys and ha having one major or one minor, because at the moment it's um, everything is in C minor. If I want to change the key signature, I can just click right here and choose from uh, many different kinds of key signatures. If you're not a musician, then maybe key signature won't mean much to you or time signature, uh, but those options are available for you there if you want to play around with them. So yes, let's add this little piano one, and I'm going to put it right here underneath so that it starts um, a little while after, and then I'm going to stretch that out. So let's, let's put that together and see how it sounds. I can move uh, this bar as well, just by clicking and dragging it as well uh, to a different point in the song so that I can hear what that sounds like where. And as you can see, it already sounds pretty cool. Um, if you're unable to hear that, let me know. Um, but yes, and that's so that's just with two loops. Um, so let's say we want to add one more. Let's add some kind of percussion like drums. So I'm going to click on all drums now. And I'm going to try to find one that I think will sound good with what I have so far. All right, I'm going to choose this one, the 80s backbeat two. And again, I'm going to click and drag and then I'll let it go. And as you can see, it has appeared and has been added to my project. All right. So now I have three different elements. I have my own little mini song. Um, another thing you can do, if you look over to the left, we have the editor panel. So right now it shows me everything I have. I have the above and beyond synth, I have the Crosstown disco piano, and the 80s backbeat for our percussion. Uh, and you can edit each of these individually. So let's say I think the percussion's a little too loud. I can use this uh, volume button here and drag it to the left to make it quieter or to the right to make it louder. So I'm going to make it a little bit quieter so it doesn't overpower the other instruments. And then the other options we have here as well for editing, if I click this button here, it's the mute button, it will then uh, stop playing. So then you can hear the other instruments, but you can't hear this one. If you do, uh, if you click on this button, it's actually the opposite. It's the solo button and it will mute all other instruments so that you can only hear this one. It isolates the sound so you can listen to it without the other ones. All right, so let's put it to the start and let's see what we created. And there we go. In just 10 or 15 minutes, we created this very cool and dancey sounding song. So as you can see, it's, it's uh, pretty simple if all you want to do is just use the most basic features. But again, uh, it can be as simple or advanced as you would like because you can do lots of different things as well. You can create your own music to add to it. Uh, you can record yourself singing and add that to the song so that you can add lyrics as well. And it's just a lot of fun. So once you're done with your project, you're going to want to save it so that you can listen to it again later or add to it at another point. So to do that, you will just go to File, 
and then press the Save button. It will then prompt you to name your project and choose where you would like to put it. And then you can press Save. If you want to share this with someone else, because uh, you want to show them the very cool song that you made, then you can go to five, File and then you can add it to iCloud and share it that way. Or um, you can uh, go to Share. And if you click Song to Music, it will export the file to Apple Music so that you can then access it there. Uh, just a reminder that Apple Music is now what used to be iTunes, so it functions similarly. You can also export it to SoundCloud if you have a SoundCloud account. You can airdrop it to another Apple device. You can send it via an email. You can even, if you have a, if you want have a disc that you want to burn it to, you can create a CD to put your song onto. And that is everything I'm going to show for now for Apple GarageBand. I hope you learned a little something and that you enjoyed today's presentation.